Uh, I was watching myself sneeze. Um, so, on the conversation or on the topic of of uh, consciousness, uh, just got me thinking about um, really what I was mentioning at the tail end of the video I was just making. Uh, just that uh, the perspective of consciousness as a unitive uh, event um, implies. Uh, a, nece a necessary coalescence or uh, I guess unification of the human species uh, due to its inherent unity as a species and its uh, its heavy uh, the implications of consciousness being a uh, intrinsically involved uh, participant, if you will, of the universe, really. The, the actual universe itself, reality itself, participating in the machinations of itself. Of itself. What we're talking about here is if God were to make a video game so that it could play all of the characters as though it were separate so that it would have more potential, more complexity, more uh, intri intrigue, nuance, complexity, uh, surprise, surprise, especially surprise, such that the, the player uh, feels a complete identification with the object initially uh, or naturally. And the concept of enlightenment is the breaking of that, uh, that call it a delusion. Uh, a delusion of identification with the object rather than uh, a kind of realization of uh, universality or uh, boundless presence which lies beneath that uh, superficial object which we associate with. Uh, so this is a, this realization of unity is important today more than ever because it, it, is, it is necessary for us to unify in recognition of our rights as human beings, as innately sovereign beings. Because if we are the universe, if we are the divine and sacred presence that, that bore us as species in the first place, we owe it to ourselves, to our capital S self, to do this, to unify under a new uh, paradigm of we are the sovereigns individually and collectively and that there is no uh, legitimacy uh, when it comes to a sovereign nation, a, uh, a sovereign uh, in the sense of royalty. We are all innately royal. And so a new system of governance for that recognition, uh, as well as, I mean, obviously the failed, flawed, antiquated systems, obsolete, uh, practically when they were first established, are uh, in need of reformation, if not abolishment. But the fact of the matter remains that the only way we are going to achieve that kind of a transformation of our infrastructure, of our uh, precepts, practices, and, and so forth, is the recognition of unity, that we are a species, that we are a consciousness, that we are it, and it is us, and it, it reflects us, and we reflect it. So we have to 
alter and abolish the forms to which we are accustomed in order to um, better live and to really give justice, to really give um, what is uh, right for that that uh, for the human existence, for the for the existence of reality, for for if we were to if we were to love God, if if there are Christians or whoever, even atheists, if you can imagine uh, loving uh, the something higher than yourself, uh, loving that, loving loving each other or loving uh, humanity with the same intensity because of the fact that we are it. Humanity is a uh, direct uh, representation of the universe itself. And whether or not the universe itself has a personality or not, uh, frankly, I don't know. And um, looking at, however, the, uh, the super deep field of the universe, it seems almost possible, you know, it seems perhaps even probable that there is an actual universal brain of some sort and we are just thoughts that are being uh, kind of briefly whisked around in this universal uh, uh, soup of, uh, of, of mind, the universal mind. But, but uh, back on, the, on the, you know, the main train of thought here, um, if if that kind of intensity and passion could be directed towards our rights uh, due to this innate sovereignty, uh, then the kind of transformation of our systems can finally be achieved. But what it, me what it means and what it takes is our relinquishment of the materialistic uh, game, the racket of money, and the, uh, the anti-economic principles of a consumption economy. Um, we need to radically transform our, uh, our systems. And once again, I think that the only way that this would be uh, even really probable to have happen uh, is for us to come together under the recognition of consciousness as a universal uh, force of nature, uh, that we are forces of nature and not these uh, human resources that we've been reduced to by modern culture. Uh, we need to uh, reach back into our history as a species and uh, kind of integrate the, the pre-modern concepts of the spiritual um, and really that term is uh, obviously a loaded uh, loaded word, but bear with me here, um, and integrating that with the modern rationality, uh, so that such that a kind of rational spirituality can exist in which um, the perspective, uh, from from my experience, leans more towards a kind of pantheism, a kind of belief that, uh, or or a kind of understanding rather that the universe is. Um, <clears throat> a kind of deity, a kind of sacred, uh, sacred presence, a sacred uh, essence, wh whatever you want to call it, and that we are uh, the children, uh, the the creations, the manifestations of that uh, that kind of call it what you will, the the energies. This, the, the relationship between energy and consciousness. Uh, um, th this is what will bring us together and this will ultimately, in my, in my view, uh, will be what will enlighten and liberate mankind from its, uh, its invisible cage. Uh, it will be what will lead us to um, ultimately redefine the wheel of our mind. Um, I guess that's really um, it for this video. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, love and gratitude. Love and gratitude.